Oh, right. Let's dive into the first topic, understanding the pathophysiology of asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airways, which can cause symptoms such as shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing, and wheezing. The main factors involved in the development and progression of asthma are inflammation, airway hyperresponsiveness, and bronchoconstriction. Inflammation is a key player in asthma. When the airways become inflamed, they swell and produce more mucus, which can cause the airways to become narrower. This inflammation is caused by various triggers, such as allergens, irritants, or infections. In response to these triggers, the body releases inflammatory mediators like histamine and leukotrienes, which contribute to the inflammation and swelling of the airways. Now, let's talk about airway hyperresponsiveness. This means that the airways of people with asthma are more sensitive and reactive than those without the condition. When exposed to certain triggers, the muscles surrounding the airways can contract more than usual, causing the airways to narrow even further. This exaggerated response is referred to as bronchoconstriction. Bronchoconstriction is the third major factor in the development and progression of asthma. As the smooth muscles around the airways contract, it becomes increasingly difficult for air to move in and out of the lungs. This is what leads to the classic symptoms of asthma, such as wheezing and shortness of breath. So to sum up, the pathophysiology of asthma involves inflammation, airway hyperresponsiveness, and bronchoconstriction. These factors interact and contribute to the narrowing of the airways, making it difficult for people with asthma to breathe. In our next topic, we'll explore the various types and classifications of asthma to better identify and manage specific triggers and symptoms. Moving on to our second topic, let's explore the various types and classifications of asthma. Understanding the different types of asthma is crucial in identifying and managing specific triggers and symptoms. The main types of asthma are allergic, non-allergic, exercise-induced, and occupational asthma. First up is allergic asthma, which is the most common form of the disease. This type of asthma occurs when the immune system overreacts to allergens such as pollen, dust mites, or pet dander. When exposed to these allergens, the body produces an immune response that leads to inflammation and bronchoconstriction, resulting in asthma symptoms. Next, we have non-allergic asthma. Unlike allergic asthma, this type is not triggered by allergens. Instead, it can be caused by irritants like smoke, strong odors, and air pollution. Non-allergic asthma can also be triggered by factors such as stress, cold air, or respiratory infections. The underlying mechanisms are similar to allergic asthma, with inflammation and bronchoconstriction playing a major role. Now let's discuss exercise-induced asthma. As the name suggests, this type of asthma is triggered by physical activity. During exercise, people tend to breathe more rapidly, which can cause the airways to become narrow and lead to asthma symptoms. Exercise-induced asthma can affect both people with and without pre-existing asthma, although those with existing asthma may experience more severe symptoms. Lastly, we have occupational asthma. This type of asthma is caused by exposure to specific irritants or allergens in the workplace. Common triggers include chemicals, dust, and fumes. Occupational asthma can develop in individuals who previously did not have asthma, or it can worsen pre-existing asthma. In summary, the various types and classifications of asthma include allergic, non-allergic, exercise-induced, and occupational asthma. Recognizing the specific type of asthma and its triggers can help individuals manage their symptoms more effectively. Next, we will investigate the impact of asthma on lung function and overall respiratory health. Now that we've explored the different types of asthma, 
let's investigate the impact of asthma on lung function and overall respiratory health. Asthma can lead to structural and functional changes in the airways, which can result in limitations on airflow and oxygen exchange. First, let's look at the structural changes that occur in the airways. With long-term inflammation, the walls of the airways can become thicker, a process known as airway remodeling. This remodeling can cause the airways to become less flexible, further limiting airflow. Additionally, the increased production of mucus, as well as the swelling and narrowing of the airways, can obstruct the flow of air in and out of the lungs. Next, let's discuss the functional changes that occur due to asthma. When the airways become inflamed and constricted, it becomes more difficult for air to move through the respiratory system. This can lead to a reduction in lung function, as measured by tests like spirometry. Spirometry is a common test used to assess how well the lungs are working by measuring the amount and speed of air a person can inhale and exhale. The limitations on airflow and oxygen exchange can have a significant impact on overall respiratory health. People with asthma may experience shortness of breath, chest tightness, coughing, and wheezing. These symptoms can affect daily activities and even lead to nighttime awakenings, resulting in poor sleep quality. Moreover, asthma can increase the risk of respiratory infections, as the inflamed and narrowed airways can make it more difficult for the body to clear mucus and bacteria. This can lead to complications such as bronchitis or pneumonia. In conclusion, asthma can have a significant impact on lung function and overall respiratory health due to the structural and functional changes that occur in the airways. These changes result in limitations on airflow and oxygen exchange, which can affect an individual's quality of life. In the next topic, we'll examine the body's immune response to asthma and how it contributes to the chronic nature of the disease. Now let's examine the body's immune response to asthma. We'll focus on the involvement of inflammatory mediators, immune cells, and the activation of specific signaling pathways that contribute to the chronic nature of the disease. When the body encounters an asthma trigger, the immune system responds by releasing inflammatory mediators, such as histamine, leukotrienes, and cytokines. These mediators play a crucial role in the development of inflammation and bronchoconstriction, leading to the characteristic symptoms of asthma. Immune cells, including mast cells, eosinophils, and T helper cells, are also essential players in the immune response to asthma. Mast cells are responsible for releasing histamine and other inflammatory mediators upon exposure to allergens. Eosinophils, on the other hand, release toxic proteins that can further damage the airway tissues and contribute to inflammation. T helper cells, specifically Th2 cells, are involved in orchestrating the immune response by producing cytokines that promote inflammation and recruit other immune cells to the site of inflammation. The activation of specific signaling pathways is another important aspect of the immune response to asthma. One key pathway is the NF-kappa-B pathway, which regulates the production of inflammatory cytokines and other mediators. Activation of this pathway contributes to the persistent inflammation seen in asthma. Another critical pathway is the Janus kinase signal transducer and activator of transcription, or JAK-SAC pathway. This pathway is involved in the activation and differentiation of immune cells, such as Th2 cells, which play a significant role in promoting inflammation in asthma. In summary, the body's immune response to asthma involves the release of inflammatory mediators, the activation and recruitment of various immune cells, and the activation of specific signaling pathways. These factors collectively contribute to the chronic nature of the disease, leading to ongoing inflammation and airway hyperresponsiveness. In the next and final topic, we'll discuss the current treatment options and management strategies for asthma to reduce symptoms, prevent exacerbations, and improve the quality of life. Finally, let's discuss the current treatment options and management strategies for asthma. The goal of asthma management is to reduce symptoms, prevent exacerbations, and improve the quality of life for those affected by the condition. This can be achieved through the use of medications, 
environmental control measures, and patient education. First, let's talk about medications. There are several types of medications used to treat asthma, including corticosteroids, bronchodilators, and biologics. Corticosteroids, such as inhaled corticosteroids, are used to reduce inflammation in the airways and are often the first line of treatment for persistent asthma. Bronchodilators, including short-acting and long-acting beta agonists, work by relaxing the smooth muscles around the airways, helping to alleviate symptoms like wheezing and shortness of breath. Biologics, a newer class of medications, target specific immune pathways involved in asthma and can be particularly helpful for those with severe asthma, but is not well controlled with conventional treatments. Environmental control measures are also crucial in managing asthma. Identifying and avoiding triggers is an essential step in preventing exacerbations. For instance, if allergens are a trigger, measures like using allergy-proof bedding, vacuuming regularly, and using air purifiers can help reduce exposure. Similarly, if irritants like smoke or strong odors are triggers, avoiding these substances and maintaining good indoor air quality can make a significant difference. Lastly, patient education plays a vital role in asthma management. Educating individuals with asthma about their condition, including recognizing early warning signs of an asthma attack and how to use their medications properly can empower them to take control of their health. Developing a personalized asthma action plan in collaboration with a healthcare provider can help individuals know when and how to adjust their medications in response to changes in their symptoms. In conclusion, the management of asthma involves a combination of medications, environmental control measures, and patient education. By understanding and implementing these strategies, individuals with asthma can work towards reducing their symptoms, preventing exacerbations, and ultimately improving their quality of life.